Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're starting on the Steel Cruisers. What is the best Steel Cruiser to get in 2024? Well, we're gonna start off taking a look at the Stalingrad, go over the pros and cons of this ship, and uh, a big pro, a reason you want this ship, are salvos like this, of course. <laughs> Nearly full health, dev striking a radar HE spamming cruiser. That's what we like to see. Towards the end, after four videos, then I will rank all of these ships. There are four steel cruisers that are available. But today we are going to start with the Stalingrad. I played the ship quite a bit and have some upgraded thoughts or some more recent thoughts. This ship has been my go-to recommendation for steel cruisers and rivaled the Borgone in the past. This ship is very, very strong. You have a good 12 kilometer radar, you have pretty decent armor overall, and you have some amazing guns. 305s that have pretty good accuracy as well as amazing shell flight times, and of course the pen on them is extreme. Our dispersion's decent. You're gonna see that some of the salvos are a little lackluster at times. I've got quite a few clips to show you guys, but this was the best game that I had in this one and we are going to get some very nice damage. We've already had some very nice salvos. The AP here going to smash this thunder here and give us our second kill as well as nine citadels in very quick succession. That is something we like to see. These shells have improved pen angles slightly. They're not Des Moines levels, but they are slightly improved as well as having short fuses on the AP. So that should make us much more consistent into light cruisers, lighter armored targets. The HE is just all right. Uh, it's certainly something you want to be using. The fire chance is pretty decent. The pen is pretty decent as well as the alpha damage. Just your reload, right? You're not as much of an HE DPM ship, but with your range, you can actually do some pretty decent HE stuff. Uh, I'll show you that a little more towards the end. Gonna compliment our Des Moines here as he is pushing very aggressively in this game and is the reason that this flank went so well. People had to angle to a uh, pushed up Des Moines, therefore they gave me broadside. So very big thank you to the Des Moines for pushing up in this one. Vladivostok, just spam some HE at him real quick. You're gonna really like the shell velocity here, I think. Aiming with this ship is not too difficult. Even if the dispersion will troll you at times, it isn't too hard to lead shots at range. You're not playing a Vermont, for example, where you got these very floaty shells. Sure, it can hit hard, but Aiming with 20 second lead times is pretty difficult. This ship allows you to have some of those punchy salvos while also retaining the ability to not have to lead off your screen, essentially. Although I don't feel like this ship is as good as it was. You're gonna see that a lot of people, myself included, have thought that Stalingrad has been this absolute powerhouse ever since it was released. And it was very strong when it was released, all right? You gotta consider that this ship is very, very old. This is the ship that was released for the very first seasons of clan battles, all right? That's a long time ago. And uh, the game was in a very different state. We talk about power creep, but I think it's very clear that there's been some power creep here. Specifically regarding the overall tankiness of Stalingrad. I think the guns are still pretty decent, although we have seen that for the most part, Citadels are getting lower in the water, harder to hit, more overpenable. Not all, you know, Vladivostok here giving us a nice Citadel. This game is my best one. Uh, I do have some complaints about this ship, but it still performs very, very, very well. So if you're thinking about getting the Stalingrad here in 2024, I think it's still an amazing ship. I just don't think it's quite as good as I've given it credit to in the past, just because I haven't played it all that much in the last few years, honestly. It's just kind of sat in port for me. I've wanted to play other ships. And so because of that, I haven't really noticed the changes all that much. I think it really started when Stalingrad lost its fire prevention. I think that was a big change for this ship where it no longer could tank HE spam nearly as well. We're gonna get lit on multiple double fires in this video. I'm gonna die several times in this video to HE spam, fires, and just staying angled and dying anyway. And obviously that is how the game works, but in the past, this ship would just live situations that honestly, most other ships would not. And so that's where a lot of us thought it was very tanky back in the day. A lot like Petro feels today, or at least old Petro. Uh, Petro is still ridiculously tanky, but hey, hopefully we're getting some concealment nerfs here in the next patch. That's nice to see. 
Uh, so we'll see how that feels, but uh, this ship certainly felt a lot more tanky back in the day. And to go alongside these big guns and the powerful radar, it's no wonder why this ship was thought of as so strong, flat out OP even. And it was even worse because this ship was given to the best players, quote unquote, on the servers, because you had to earn three clan battles flags to get this ship. This was pre-steel. This was before there was any sort of resource. Um, oh, just to point out, uh, Smolensk still is going to get overpanned by this thing. <laughs> Very disappointingly. And then we're going to have no hits there with our rear gun. Very nice. Uh, it control you still, okay? This is going to be an insane game. We already have 10 citadels, okay? The guns are amazing. It can still troll you, all right? I want to paint a very clear picture there. Look at that dispersion next time, right? Most of the time it's very accurate, um, but it still can troll you at times. But pre-steel, all right? This is before the ar armory, I think. Uh, maybe they introduced armory to get allow you to exchange your flags. There was three Stalingrad flags. You had to get through Typhoon League to uh, get that. I think it was 20 or 30 wins in Typhoon League with your clan. And then that was how you got your flags. And once you did three seasons of that, you got yourself a Stalingrad. So better players getting to higher leagues in clan battles, of course. And then you give them a ship with some of the best guns in the entire game at the time. An insanely long range radar, as well as a overall very, very tanky ship. Yeah, you can see why this thing has its reputation. And it still is very, very good. I just think it does die a little quicker than it used to. And the guns don't feel as powerful, even though they are still just as strong as they were. I think the game has overall shifted around this ship. Other ships have gained stronger or just as strong guns. And I think overall armor is a little bit better in that there's less of it to hit. <laughs> less of those citadels to hit that is so 285 in this one 11 citadels three kills amazing game yes it is arms race so maybe the damage is inflated a little bit but 11 citadels is no joke all right that is going to be a good game regardless of whether it is arms race or not and in fact in this one we also got a fireproof over 3.3k base xp in that one a very good game and yet i think our des moines is who, who carried that game uh, I don't think I had that much actual battle impact without him. So big thanks to him. Bungo broadside at close range. Three full bends. Feels bad. Now we're getting into some of the experiences of the Stalingrad. All right. I had to show you guys that full game with the Stalingrad. My best one. I had a really good time. Stalingrad overall is very, very powerful. Now we're going to get some clips of what my experience was like while playing this thing. Don't walk around flat broadside to a Petro. I think you probably knew that, but just to reinforce it, there you go. <laughs> I was trying to play this ship incredibly aggressive. I just want you guys to realize that as well. With these videos, I want to limit test these ships all over again. As I tend to when I get a new ship, I'm going to try and push very aggressively just to see where the limits are. And so taking a relook at these steel cruisers, steel battleships already done, I'm going to try and make plays that I normally wouldn't or I know aren't going to work out so well. In this case, getting ourselves uh, basically on one shot range. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we only got one Citadel there into the Stalingrad at that angle. And here again, Stalingrad showing us enough angle. I think those shells are going to hit when he's around 30 degrees. Decent hit, 8k, but uh, no Citadels there, unfortunately. We aren't actually going to live this. I know that might surprise you. And uh, this Stalingrad left on 11,000 HP, or 1,000 HP. Uh, my teammates just decide to shoot the Napoli there instead. So we are going to go down. We trade him though, which is very, very nice. But the thing is, this Stalingrad is much bigger. All right. This is a way bigger ship than a Petro. Not only taller, but I think, I mean, the superstructure is like three times the size, something like that. And uh, the weak points on this ship are much more pronounced. Salem going flat broadside to us. Our radar getting us on a ton of information and only getting one Citadel on his broadside. That's still a good salvo, 18k, don't get me wrong. But we know what this ship can do, okay? This ship is supposed to be the battleship that doesn't ever miss. And then we get the wonkiest dispersion that also still dev strikes him. <laughs> 
right? You've probably heard it before. If you like battleships, but you hate the RNG and the dispersion and the annoyances there, get a Stalingrad and you're gonna enjoy yourself. You've probably heard that. I don't think it's quite that level. Uh, it certainly can do very, very well, but not only are there issues with the dispersion at times, but we have ourselves some aiming bugs in this video game. So, broadside Edgar about to accelerate back into his smoke screen. Shells go short. I'm sure you've seen that one before on your own monitor while you're playing the game. <laughs> happens to everyone. And unfortunately, it happened to my Stalingrad here. So now we are stuck bow on to a Lepanto and an Edgar with a Fletcher and soon to be Kitakaze AG spamming us. I have to push here because again, I'm playing too aggressive and there's an Azuma on my broadside who fortunately doesn't realize that I'm here or is looking at something else. Swap back to the HE. It's not going to do much to this angle of the panto. And this is a situation where I thought I was going to live longer than I was, actually. Again, overestimating what Stalingrad is capable of. Whether that's just my inexperience with this ship in the last couple of years, or that uh, Edgar has some insane DPM even when you're angled, which seems a little ridiculous considering how much it's just armor piercing. And uh, lots of fires, lots of HE damage as well. Our superstructure taking a lot of hits here. Kuznetsov allowing us to live longer if you do have Kuznetsov. Busted, overpowered commander. Not sure why it's still in the game like this. That allows us to get the Lepanto. Uh, without that commander, obviously we die there much earlier and we are still going to go down. But there's a lot of situations here. Maybe I've just played Petro too much recently and uh, I'm just overestimating what Stalingrad is capable of. But just my overall feelings on this ship is that it is nowhere near as tanky as I either remember it being or I thought it was. Okay, moving on. Playing aggressive, what else are we gonna do if we find ourselves on two brothers with mid spawn? We're just gonna full send push middle. <laughs> and see how it goes. We run into a Carl Johan here, which has smaller caliber AP, which allows us to angle and take essentially zero damage. This is the battleship level armor coming into play here. We're gonna spam some HE at him. We're gonna use our armor piercing. Uh, the high explosive here is really good when you can land it on unsaturated sections of the ship and especially the hull armor. Super structures, uh, you're going to do okay damage to, but the longer reload makes the HE a little bit more difficult to use and rack up a lot of damage in these closer ranges. The improved pen angles though should help us out a lot. We are going to take several torpedoes here. They do quite a bit of damage, considering they're Johan Torps um, that don't have high alpha regardless. Um, but Stalingrad does not have a very good torp protection, so we are going to take a bit of damage there. But again, we can just bow tank this guy. This is where Stalingrad felt a little more normal. Uh, put my shells into his gun turrets there, not quite high enough for his superstructure. This is one of the reasons you want as small a superstructure as possible, right? You don't want to be getting hit while you're angled in your superstructure for a lot of damage. So, the on here, again, trying to hit there. 1500 damage for two full pens. Saturated sections, right? And superstructure saturated, so we're not doing as much. I'm trying to land fires because I saw him damage control a single fire. So, wanted to use that to try and kill him, but eventually decided it's better to just swap back to the AP and see how that does into his superstructure. A little better angle. And there we go, we do like 8,000 damage that time, which is a lot better, meaning I probably should have stuck to the AP more. If there's saturated sections of superstructure, uh, you already have a fire on the bow section there where you're not really going to get that out of HE. You've saturated already with HE. It might just be better to stick to the armor piercing. Those improved pen angles into the superstructure with the short fuses can do some pretty good damage. Stalingrad, of course, is going to be amazing on a flank. We all know that with these shells and also with this Michelangelo here, we do manage to get ourselves 10K and help take him out. Feels pretty good. This game though spiraled out of control pretty quickly for our team. So with my teammates trying to send it up middle, I'm gonna try and meet them around the side, trying to deal with this low health Yodo as well as a three quarter health Worcester. This could be rather difficult, although the Yodo is still showing a broad side to us. Unfortunately, only one full pen that time, maybe aimed a bit low on that one. We'll try and do a little bit better next time. So, Yodo here slightly moving away from us, so we aim a little bit up, and he in fact starts turning into us. So if anything, these should go a little bit high. And we bracket him. <laughs> 
with a torp protection hit just to rub salt in the wound. Unlucky. Uh, so we'll try again, I guess. Now we have 40k HP. We also have Kuznetsov available to us. So this shouldn't be too bad, right? Worcester's only on 14,000 damage. Yodo's also very low. This should be an easy cleanup for a Stalingrad. Well, there's the first fire on one of the first hits. That's not amazing. Uh, decent dispersion here. Worcester doing an excellent job of trying to stay angled when I'm firing and then turning to get all his guns on target. Five bounces there. Very good work by him angling like that. Now Yodo not doing as good a job, so we'll try and take him out next. And uh, double fire here feels a little bad. We'll get our heal and our damage control used. That's our last heal in this game. Finally taking out the Yodo feels good. And now just this Worcester left to deal with. There's a Shikishima as well as the uh, Shimakaze. Sorry, forgot the name of that ship uh, in the south to deal with. But again, still just trying to deal with this Worcester here and uh, struggling a little bit. I think this time he's going to make a mistake and allow us to uh, get him here. So these angles should bullpen at least here and we do get him. So now just the Shikishima left to deal with and he's gonna overmatch through our upper bow. I will show you the armor profile later uh, in this video once we're in port, but uh, unfortunately not the most protected ship at closer ranges versus battleship AP. What a decent last stand there. Um, I would have liked to kill the Yodo a little quicker, do a little more damage to the Worcester, but that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, it's not a full battleship giving you all the overmatch into these cruisers, so you have to really capitalize on them when they are going broadside. Like possibly this Yodo here. But the important part of this particular clip is how much damage we're going to take angled to this Al Soviet Russia, whatever this thing is. I believe it's a Soyuz, the tier nine, uh, Russian battleship as a premium with normal battleship dispersion, not Russian dispersion. So 406s. And, um, okay, so around 10k and takes out one of our turrets. I lost my turrets a lot in this ship as well, I noticed. Um, so that was kind of annoying with this ship. Next time we should try to go for the bow, although he's going to angle that in too much. We don't actually get that much damage. So since it's my back turret he took out, I figure it may as well angle even better. So this is a really good angle to take here. He essentially has to hit us in our upper bow to get some big damage into us. Superstructure should just overpin. And he's only got his front guns. What's the worst that could happen? 14,000 damage. Uh, rough. So that's 24k into our angled Stalingrad already. And we miss the Yodo again. That back turret is obviously going to miss as he is accelerating. And a uh, little wonky dispersion here and there on this Yodo. Might not be aiming it exactly correctly, but yeah, full pens, a bounce, it's okay. But the important thing here is how much damage we're taking to this guy. He again has his front turrets, and that's another near 11,000 damage. <laughs> that's like 35k we've taken to this guy. Just bow on from three salvos. Uh, yeah. So there's your armor profile on the Stalingrad. I think a Petro certainly would not be taking that level of damage. Just wanted to show you guys that as I think it's important to understand that when you get a Stalingrad, it is not the beast tank, amazing Russian battleship, battle cruiser type of ship that you can just hold flanks forever with. Uh, that is not the case. And honestly, a lot of the time when I was playing as aggressive as I was here, uh, I was getting backseated a little bit uh, by Twitch chat. That ha tends to happen. That's all right. Something I just have to deal with. Again, playing very aggressive here. Look at where my team is. But a lot of people wondered, why am I playing so close to the caps? Objectives, trying to get close and use the armor piercing, catching people's broadsides. Well, I wanted to get opportunities like this, where we find a battleship broadside and we don't do too much damage to it. I wanted to see what this ship would be capable of when I gave it the best opportunities possible to hit these broadside ships. Sure, we can do that at max range, kiting away. We can try, but I wanted to see what Stalingrad guns would do up close, because that is where they should be the most consistent. And then if they work here, then we can start to try and see what they're going to do at longer ranges. And it kind of disappointed me, uh, honestly. Sure, back guns, we got a Citadel there on the Worcester, but this next salvo, well, look at this dispersion right? It does troll you. Keep in mind, we had an 11 Citadel game to start, okay? Totally, make sure you keep that in mind. Also, this is just like 
my opinions, okay? If you enjoy this ship, if you think it's the best, that is fine. Personally, I kind of don't like it in 2024, actually. Um, just the way I'm feeling about this ship. Anyways, decided to try it out. What should we do with a Stalingrad? Well, asking Twitch chat, we want to run range mod and HE spam, kite it away the instant we get into our game. And unfortunately, this is the easiest way to play this ship to guarantee relatively good damage. The really good shell velocity and accuracy at range with the high explosive allows you to very reliably hit these battleships and get a lot of fire damage and stay relatively safe. You can speed juke rather easily with this ship when you have propulsion mod active. And since you're not pushing bow in or you're as close bow in, people have a tougher time hitting your weak points of your superstructure and that upper bow and stern. So overall, the ship is gonna perform a lot better when trying to deal a lot of damage to people and uh, just get high average damage games. However, your battle impact drops to basically zero, right? We're not getting any value out of this radar and we're not applying very much pressure with our decent armor piercing here. Sure, if we catch a broadside at longer ranges, we can do some pretty good damage, but it's not nearly as powerful uh, when we're at 20 kilometers than it is at 10 to 15 kilometers, since we saw that it was a little inconsistent at times at those really close ranges. What do you think happens at these farther ranges, right? I think that just makes sense. But this was the least stressful, easiest game of this entire session I was playing with Stalingrad. We are going to lose this one quite badly. I think if I had pushed up a little more, maybe with our GK and the radar, we could have helped our team a little bit more. But this is the this is the selfish way to play, I guess, um, where you are, if you're lo someone looking for um, average damage, that kind of thing, looking to grind and see how high up on the leaderboards you can get, if that's something you're looking for, probably, maybe not necessarily range mod because you still want some reload and DPM, but you're gonna try and play like this a lot. You're not gonna try and risk your ship as much because like we see, it is something that this ship struggles with a little bit more in 2024. It's not nearly as tanky as it once felt, to me at least. And that's fine. And I wanna show you guys this as well, not just to be, you know, this is the bad play style. I, I don't like this play style as much, but I wanna show you guys this, not just to take a crap all over this play style, but to show you that if you're struggling with this ship to make it work after you've got it, and uh, you're struggling to get it into position without dying, or you're dealing very little damage with the armor piercing, you can play it like this and still figure slowly figure it out. And then when opportunities present themselves, like a broadside cruiser kind of trying to rotate over from one cap to another, you can swap to the armor piercing and then get a feel for the AP that way. That is another good way to learn this ship as well, especially if you're not as comfortable in a ship that's this big with this many weaknesses. I've really talked a lot about the weakness of the armor here, and I haven't even mentioned the Citadel. This is an old school Citadel. Uh, this is an old school ship, as I've mentioned, came into the game quite a while ago now, but this Citadel is from a very different time in World of Warships. It is way above the waterline, and it is very thick. It's the entire width of the ship, and it means anytime you're caught broadside, you are going to take massive damage. You saw that with the Petro, but we did the same or similar amount of damage back to the Petro, right? Early on in this video. And you're much weaker than a Petro broadside. Much, much weaker. Petro is so low in the water, it can be very difficult to hit outside 10, 15 kilometers, let's say, with battleship dispersion. This ship, much more consistent. In fact, against broadside Stalingrads, for the most part, I find them more consistently taking Citadels than even things like a Minotaur, uh, or a Brisbane in this case, uh, for example. Um, there you go, 150k damage, very chill, very relaxed game, HE spam focused, but our team got absolutely smashed. And let's say blowouts happen, blowouts happen regardless, but I don't think after this game I did a great job of helping my team try to win this game, even though I got good damage and was top score in this one. So that's it for the gameplay sections, taking you for a bit of a tour around the matches that I played and the experiences I had with this ship recently. Now we can look at this ship in port, and as we do, I want to again remind you that this is just for me to look at these ships and reevaluate my recommendations on 
all these steel cruisers. You can see I only have two of them actually, so I'm gonna have to play on my press account for uh, some of the other ones. But if you're enjoying this ship, don't let my words and maybe my harsh words a little bit in this video against Stalingrad prevent you from enjoying this ship, okay? This is just a situation where I want to share my thoughts and experiences on this ship and allow you guys, maybe who haven't actually experienced the Stalingrad looking to get it, understand what it is like in 2024. And of course, that's the goal of looking at all of these ships to reevaluate them from my side and give you an updated recommendation on them while also sharing my experience on them in 2024 here as the game has certainly changed. So, the armor. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's an old ship, guys. It's an old ship. That is your Citadel. <laughs> Large Citadel. Very, very, very easy to hit this Citadel. And uh, it's not the most armored either. 180 mil protection, and that is not spaced, guys. That is right out to the edge of the ship. Uh, real quick, let's just take a good old look at Petro. Yeah, it's also above water, but guess what? It actually has spaced armor here as well. And that is the same thickness as Stalin's entire Citadel armor without having any sort of spacing at all. Uh, so the effective thickness, and you know, the middle's a little worse at 40, but under the turrets here, you're getting, you're getting pretty close there, like at 300 mil thickness. Tough to hit. And of course, Petro has been raised out of the water recently as well. This used to be a lot lower. But then, other than that, the other thing you need to keep in mind with this ship is it also is just generally a lot taller. So as soon as we, say, are angled like this, like I ha was trying to do to that Russian battleship, as well as just throughout the video trying to take angles like this, if you're shooting your rear gun at close range, you can be citadeled. At mid range, it's less likely. But that's why I'm kind of always trying to wiggle back and forth like this at these angles, I'm trying to bait people into hitting here ish. I'm hoping that if they hit up in the superstructure, it's just going to overpen. Obviously, we saw what happened against that tier nine Russian battleship, just full penning us here. Uh, he wasn't even hitting this bow section, which is the major weak point at closer ranges. If you just go bow in, this is just full pen city. This is like easy, easy 15, 20k salvos from a tier 10 battleship at close ranges, okay? Not not mid to long ranges, but at close ranges, very, very easy. You have the icebreaker to shield the Citadel at least, but uh, this is just so massive, right? And if we compare that to Petro, I know Petro is a little OP, but you know, it's good to see. It's just so much smaller. It's still there, obviously, but it's just so much smaller, so much less superstructure, right? Uh, that's why Petro feels so strong and so tanky, even after some of these nerfs. So that is the armor on this ship. Of course, the stern less armored yet. So if you are in that kiting position, you are liable to take a little bit more damage. But uh, since you'll be farther away, able to speed juke, you shouldn't take as much damage. At least that was my experience with it. I moved over to range mod, and so that's why the first game, you might have noticed, was with range mod. Even though we were up close using the AP and having a great time citadeling everything, uh, I was using range mod because that was actually the last game that I played in this ship. I had about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes of okay, but overall rather frustrating experiences with the Stalingrad, and then I finally got a good game right at the end. My intention really was to play two hours straight of these ships and then evaluate if I needed to play them more or I had enough experience to give some updated thoughts on them in 2024. So right at the end, I managed to get a good game to show you guys. Otherwise, this video would have been much more negative. <laughs> but I'm glad I did get that good game because I know Stalin is capable of games like that where we do get those just amazing citadel dev strike level salvos into cruisers and battleships alike uh, i just wasn't getting them for over an hour and a half straight it was rough um it was pretty rough our speed is pretty nice here turning radius is atrocious and rudder shifts okay but that bad turning circle radius means this exposed citadel is even harder to deal with again another reason why i think a lot of people tend to play it like i did in the last game right where i just turned out from spawn, reversed towards the enemy, and tried to HE spam down the enemy battleships. Because at least that way, you're never caught bow in and forced to decide between getting farmed down without fire prevention anymore, 
or making a suicide turn with one of the most exposed citadels in the entire game. Called a suicide turn for a reason, I guess. Uh, Adrenaline Rush here, very nice, as well as top grade gunner, concealment, very basic battleship or battle cruiser build, survivability expert, um, superintendent. Consumables enhancements give us a little longer time on that radar. Gun feeder, because we want to use both the AP and the HE. And grease the gears. That's the build I was running. If you have Kuznetsov, may as well put him on here. It is a premium ship after all. And uh, he's OP. Uh, he's very, very, very OP. Just because he lets you live when you really shouldn't. Especially as your ship gains more HP. This uh, will to victory only activates when your ship's HP falls below 10%. So on this ship... That's still like 7,600 HP, which is not much, right? 7,000 HP is not much to have uh, for this to activate, and it gets even worse the less HP you have. Will to Victory are really the best on higher HP ships. Uh, but it can still save you in DDs and light cruisers too, but uh, Stalingrad is pretty powerful, but and again, on the battleships, also very powerful. So that is going to do it for my thoughts on the Stalingrad in 2024. If you are interested in your ship in this ship, you now know what I think about it. But you don't know the order in which I would rank this ship against the other steel cruisers. And for that, you're going to have to just wait until the end of this series. We got 3 more ships to do, and then the final video will be that general ranking comparing them in port and talking about why I would get a certain one ship before getting a different one. So look forward to that and thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.